In today's video, I'll be going over how I build my own cedar porch swings. If you like this project, stay tuned and at the very end I'll go over the complete parts list and everything you need to build your own. Alright, let's start off by talking about the kind of fasteners I use for my porch swings. Uh, this is a brand common to a lot of the hardwares around me. They're called, uh, pull this pamphlet up, they are Sabre Drive. Now I'm not sponsored by anything I'm showing you at all, so in the future if these guys want to sponsor, that'd be great, but these are what I like to use. They have a weatherproof coating on them, and they are gold in color, which goes with a lot of things, gold. So I like that color, and I like the fact they're a star drive. I mean, you ain't got to be dead on. You can be at an angle, and they'll still drive good. So I like these. I think this box here was, this is a five-pound box. These are the two-and-a-half-inch number nines. And uh, that's what I like to use on my swings because I normally use an inch thick slat. So by the time you get an inch, you've got an inch and a half going down into the wood. So it's a good bite. And uh, that's what I like to use for as fasteners. What we have here is the, the uh, seat frame. This is a template. And that gives you the curvature of the uh, seat. There's the nose. And back here is where your rear end will be sitting on the swing. This is the armrest. I have really adjusted this one to my liking. And like I said, this is just a pattern. And I have my own design. I did come up with this myself. This is original. I searched the internet back when I first did this and could not find it. So I'm going to claim it. But this is the upright. It is a Y-shaped upright. And that is when I'm doing a cup holder. A swing with cup holders. And what it will do is you imagine you've got a cup holder cut out here. And it fits right down on there. And that creates a cradle to hold your beverage. And uh, that eliminates having three pieces to do this. Now I'll explain here what that means. See, normally you would have normally you'd have a two before coming up, and uh, people that wanted cup holders would have their hole, and they would have a little ledge screwed on sticking out to receive, or they'll put a stainless steel insert, and that's okay too. But this was just my spin, a way to make it my own. And this is a Y-shaped upright, I call it. And that was my own design. I don't do curved backs on my swings. I just keep it simple. I just do a straight back. It's on a 15 degree angle. This is 15 degrees. Turning your attention over to my shaper. Again, I apologize for the cluttered mess. This of cleaning up the shop getting all the junk out I've stored over the past year of inactivity. But what I, use, what I use sometimes is these bits, these shaping template bits. See, this one has a bearing up high and down low, and this one has just a bearing at the bottom. And what they will do is I will sometimes, but if I screw this to my stock and I chuck one of these pattern bits into the shaper, I am able to let that, bit ride the pattern and cut out the stock perfectly and what that does is that eliminates the need to sand because it winds up being just as smooth as this pattern here as opposed to sometimes if i'm in a hurry i can just trace this onto the stock and go over to the bandsaw and very carefully cut it out and then i've got a little bit of sanding i wind up having to do to uh get it smooth but uh, if I use the shaper and the pattern bit, it is less sanding, like I mentioned earlier. But I All right, we're at the chop saw. Let me get my square. And uh, what we're doing is a four-foot swing. So um, the seat slats are going to be four-foot. Now, when I build a swing, if I say it's going to be four-foot, 
you're getting four foot of seat area plus the armrest width. Uh, some swings, when people build them, four foot is the uh, overall dimensions, uh, and then you lose some of your seat. Uh, the way I do my armrest and everything, you get whatever I call the swing, four, five, six foot, seven foot, whatever. I have to be a four footer, so when I cut these seat slats, they're going to be exactly four foot long. A ruler and see what we're going to get out of this one. This is eight foot five, so we can get two four foot slats out of here. I normally like to cut all my stuff longer than what I intend on getting out of it. There's a bad knot, so I'm going to go right behind it. I don't have to square it off using a chop saw, but I just like to do it so I have a reference to look at. Let me double check, make sure I got enough. Yep. Okay. We are going to turn the dust collector on and start making some cuts here. All right, I got my dust collector on. You can probably hear it. You'll see how it spits the sawdust back there. One thing I like to do when if I'm cutting a bunch of a set length of things, I'll get the first one cut and then I'll put me a stock block over here somewhere where every time I stick a piece of stock up, I just advance it against the block and make my cut. It's the same every time.
another good thing to have in your shop is a assembly table and that's what you know this is over here it doesn't have to be fancy it can just be a crude place to build stuff and mine is made out of two by fours and a sheet of birch plywood it's a good size assembly table it has uh, casters on the bottom and i build it just to where it's just slightly lower than my table saw so it doubles as an outfeed table i will all right i got all that moved so now my table saw has rollers on it i'm going to roll it a little bit uh, real quick, I meant to show you the uh, table saw we just talked about. Um, it has dust collection running to it right now. We're getting ready to rip. Um, from the factory, this thing had about a two-inch outlet on it, and that wasn't really enough to clear all the chips out of it. So uh, this is part of one of those Harbor Freight kits that I bought the first time. And this is one of those little four-inch uh, nipples here that I... Had to cut out, put it in there, uh, silicone, and put a few screws to it. And that allowed me to adapt a four inch hose to it right there in the bottom. And this thing kind of slopes inward at the bottom. So the dust kind of falls down and comes into here. And with the dust collector on, it helps not only keep all this debris out, but it helps cool the uh, electric motor as well. So it is a good upgrade. But this old girl's getting old. It is. It's still performing well. The bearings aren't bad. I've checked the bearings. They are still tight. But this thing has been through. Good Lord. I'd hate to bet the farm. Guessing. How many linear feet's been through it. But anyway. Looky looky. Went to Harbor Freight today. And got me a new remote system. For the dust collector. This one here actually comes with uh, three. You get three different uh, plug-ins, remote switches, I guess you'll call them. And then the uh, remote will work all three. I'm just gonna be using one. And when it goes bad, I'll switch them out between two and three. So that's quit having to walk back and forth. I'm gonna get this plugged up and we'll see how it does. We're right up there is where my dust collector plugs into its very own circuit. It's got its own breaker dedicated solely to the dust collector. So I'm going to get up here and plug this in for y'all. You can see me do it. Okay. You take it. I don't need a ladder. I can get that. And now the remote. All right, let's try it. Here's the remote. I'm going to press number one and see what happens. Look out. Oh, that is so nice. Now I don't have to walk back and forth.
slats and frame members, armrests and uprights all cut. I actually cut extra. That way if uh, something messed up or tore out or cracked or broke, I would have a backup and wouldn't have to go back to the drawing board. I always like to do that cut extra. But uh, when we get done, I'll kind of get an estimate of the material I used. I know this can be kind of confusing. All right, we got the planer set up over here. <clears throat> I'm going to start by uh, planing the uh, frame members and the armrest material. Get all the thicker material planed out first. I should only need ear protection for this part. Don't want anybody beating me up about eye protection. This thing here shouldn't throw anything at my eyes. So I'm just going to do the ears because these things are loud. Planer, especially a straight knife planer, if you know what know anything about planers are a little louder and as they get duller they get louder so we'll put our ear protection on and start planing Get one to call sling pump saddle. Is that our pattern right there, Dalton? Yeah. All right. What we'll do, me and my assistant Dalton here. Got your safety glasses? Yeah. All right. We'll go over and cut this on the bandsaw and get it really close. And then we'll yeah, come right yeah. over here and we'll use this cutter to get it right and perfect with no sanding. So uh We 
went over to the uh, bandsaw and got it just about close. I need to put the narrower blade on there for more uh, accurate turns. I've got my wider blade on, but you see I got it close. Now I'm going to finish it off with this template bit down here. You're probably wondering why I go to all that trouble when you could have just cut it out with a saw like you did, but see, I would have to go and sand on this and make more dust. I'm going to go right here in just a few seconds. It's going to be a perfect piece, and they're all going to be uniform. So uh, let's get started. tried I took it apart a while ago cleaned it up and used some diamond stones I had bought to try and sharpen it I think I let it go a little bit too far so it, uh, I may have to buy some new ones that'll be okay I've got a lot of use out of those so I take that off and there I've got a perfect it did chip out a little bit right there but by the time I round these over that's not going to be a big deal it's going to be the underneath you're not going to see that but uh, there's one frame piece, inch and a half thick, ready to go. I'm not going to make you watch all the other three. I'm just going to go ahead and do them off camera. And then we'll set them all side by side and go to the next. Here's a piece that did have a big knot right here. I was able to cut that part out. You can still see just a hint of that knot. So what I'll do if I'm think a piece is questionable I'll put some weight on it see how it responds bring it out over the side here I think that piece is going to be good and there is all four of the seat frame members all cut perfectly in unison in size no sanding required they're all perfect and that didn't take really in real time that probably only took me if i was being timed safely five minutes i could cut all these out using that method no need to go and sand to get back to the line the pattern bit that i used done a good job even though it's dull y'all I know I let y'all see the first one. It is a little dull, but uh, now I will do the two armrests and the upright. And all right, every piece we need has been cut out. And you're probably thinking by now, good Lord, I didn't know there was this many steps into making a swing. So what I'm going to do now is every piece, everything on this table is going to get ran across this roundover bit that I have chucked in my uh, shaper.
that I did, you can see a nice round over, softened up those edges. <clears throat> I'll show these two in comparison. You can see this. See how nice and rounded that is. And then you got these two. You can kind of compare these two. Nice and rounded over. Whoo! Finally got all that done. Here's a layout of all the parts. This is your back support pieces, your seating members, frame members, your upright, Y-shaped uprights for the cup holders, your armrest. I'll cut the three inch holes out in them later. Here's all the seat frame members, both one inch and inch and a half wide. There's the back strap. And then these two inch wide ones are for the back of the swing going up on the back. It's gonna be laid out right there. There's your seat. There's your back support going up. This is gonna get a roll top, I call it. You just have those two inch wide back slats that go all the way up. I'll use a few narrow ones to make a nice arc right here. A bit of work that goes into building any project, but you know, this swing it's got a lot of individual little parts. I mean, of course, looking at all these slats laying here, I did cut more than what I needed. Uh, I always recommend that you buy extra lumber and uh, just in case something breaks or you mess up and cut something too short, you don't have to run back to the hardware if you. It is assembly day. <clears throat> what I want to go over is the tools I will be using for the swing assembly. Of course, you're going to need a drill and a driver, impact driver. You could probably do it all with a drill, but uh, I just have these Harbor Freight Bears. If I'm saying that right, any drill will do. A lot of times if I'm going to be a near a power source, I'll use a corded drill because you ain't got to worry about charging your battery. But uh, uh, what I like to have is a countersink bit and pilot, pilot countersink bit you could call it, for drilling my uh, screw holes into the swing and plus that will drill down into the frame. I use a thick frame, but I also counter pre-drill too, just to help the not to split. I have a bit for my screws and the impact driver, Type Bond 2. I prefer Type Bond 3, but 2 is what I got, so it is water resistant. It'll be fine on this project. I've got my 2.5 inch screws that I showed you at the beginning. If you remember the Sabre Drive, they're weather coated, weather resistant. I like this brand. One of my Irwin clamps. A ruler, a square. Over here I have a quarter inch drill bit for drilling the carriage bolts I'll be using when putting together the frame. I have my wrench for tightening, tightening said bolt to go on the carriage bolts. The nuts, I'm sorry. Uh, what I've got is a quarter inch carriage bolt. A quarter inch seems to be plenty big. If you, and right here I have an assortment of the nuts that go on those carriage bolts, lock washers, washers, and these bigger washers. Just an assortment. And what you want to do is go through here and find your best looking pieces. The ones that's going to be on the two outer ends that people will see the most of. These frame members. You see how this one looks as opposed to this one which did have a knot but we tested it. It's good and strong. I wouldn't want that on the outside. I'd rather have this one. It's nice and clear, no visible knots on it. You won't see this, it'll be underneath. And you really won't see any of this except for this outside face. But I like to be selective and go through here. Find the best looking ones for the outsides. Not sure if I showed you earlier or not. They'll go together in this fashion right here. You have to take your square and set it across here to make sure they're perfectly in line. They are. And I'll take this clamp.
Oh, and that'll keep it from going anywhere. And now I'll go ahead and put my first hole through. So I'll do one up high here. that's all the way through and then there'll be one right down here See what I did there I clamped them both together the way they're going to be See that 15 degree angle back there? They're nice and straight together. There's bolts. I believe these are four inches long. It really doesn't take four inch ones to go through here. But I like to buy long ones. That way I can always just cut them off whatever I don't need. I hate to get them too short. I'll go ahead and put a little glue in this joint here. these two together and I apologize never done this on camera before so I'm just trying my best here oh yeah I went right in there I'll turn it around where you can see it yep now I have two flat washers and I'll put my two lock washers on. And now a nut for each carriage bolt. I won't go too absurdly tight with these. Get them good and snug. Take a look at the joint. See the glue coming out. I'll give her just a little bit more. You don't need it to be terribly torqued on there that is good right there if I was doing the one I mentioned to you that's a headboard this angle would be on the back instead and that flat part would be on the front so I could put a wide board at the very top and sometimes I'll put the little scroll work designs in them sometimes I won't but that's what I call a headboard I personally like the roll top better because you can kind of lay your arm back there throw your arm across the back but just this preference, whatever a person wants. All right, there's all four of the frame <clears throat> members put together. One thing I want to put out when you're doing these lap joints is that uh, my four and five foot swings get four frame support members. When I step out to a six foot wide swing, I'll throw a fifth member in there. It just makes it stronger. But with a four to five foot one, I mean, I've seen people put only three support members in a four footer, and that's kind of stretching it for me. I kind of like to have four. It just makes it nicer. That puts a, that puts a frame member every 16 inches, if I'm not wrong. I believe if that's right. And that's good support. Um, pay attention right here to this detail. You see how these two are lapped on the right? And these two seat parts are lapped on the left. That keeps it symmetrical and even. If you lapped every one of these on the right, it wouldn't look right. And plus the armrest and uprights wouldn't work out. You'll see how all that works together in the end. All right, I like to take my little cutoff wheel on my side grinder and cut these bolts off. step I'll put on this sanding wheel and I'll give that just a touching up so there's no sharp places left on it I'll repeat that process for all four I got my uh, first four foot slat 
Now these are an inch wide. There's going to be four of these to start out with. And what that will do is that will give me a nice curve around the arc of this nose. If they were wide, like I'd mentioned to you earlier, if I didn't cut that part out, if I use wide slats right here, they would be very edgy making that turn because they were so wide. By using short ones and keeping them close together, I'll space these a quarter inch apart all the way through here. And then I'll pick up with an inch and a half wide about right in there. And I think I use about a five eight spacer from there on out. But, but what we're gonna do is pre-drill here. I do that on all of them. Get this thing over where I can see it. I'm gonna, but visually I'll get these two even. Everything's flat on the table. Go ahead and drill through here. Get me a nice countersink and sometimes on these first few, I'll make sure that hole's deep enough. I'm using a two and a half inch screw, so that should give me about an inch and a half of bite into the wood. So now we'll take our driver, our impact driver. You're gonna to wanna to be careful here. If you, you uh, cinch it up too hard, you can split the material. Good and snug. Very good. And now we'll repeat that process for all the rest. I'm gonna keep you here for a minute. Now what I like to do, because this is four foot, that means these pieces will be spaced 16 inches apart. So I can come right here and make me a light mark at 16 and one at 32. And of course the other one will go flush with the end. And that will give me proper spacing. I'll get this pulled over right in line with that. And I can go ahead and pop this one in. Remember, don't over tighten it because you will split the fool out of this cedar. <clears throat> all right there we are friends we got that first slat on these are all spaced 16 inches now if it was but uh now what we'll do is we'll go to the back side and we're going to put what i call the back strap on it is this wide board that will go right across this lower back here and that will number one ensure they're exactly four foot wide and on 16 centers and also it will allow me to square the uh, back support. I'll be able to set a square on top of this and make sure the back support is perfectly square. So it serves two purposes. It ties them all together, three purposes rather. It ties all the slat uh, frameworks together at the back. It ensures the distance and it ensures you have some way of squaring it. that cinched up nice and tight I'll take you off the camera stand here so I can show you better what I'm trying to do is avoid running my screws into the uh, lags the carriage bolts so putting this one down here I got plenty of room for it to run in and not hit anything same with one right here and when I stick this upper one in here you know we're at a 15 degree angle here so by that angle will allow me to miss this one right here when I put that one in right here in the top. So that's why I put them in in that orientation. One, two, and three. So when you put your square up here, it will allow you to get that baby square. Let's double check just to be sure we didn't bloop. We are perfectly square. We are good to go. Now I 
I'll put my third screw in right down here. going anywhere. Now I'm going to repeat that process for the other three. All four are square, fully boxed. Got the back strap on. And that just boxes it in, makes it square. I went ahead while I was ripping all these uh, slap members and that's when I ripped my quarter inch spacer and my five eighths I believe is my other spacer. What I'll do is I'll set that right here on top of the one I just put in. I'll get me another slat and I'll set it in place. And what I'll do is I'll pay attention to get this even right here. Push it down tight, push it against the frame and pop your hole. Very easy when you're tightening that up. You can split it. Everything's looking good. Repeat the process for all three. Now you can just pull your spacer back out. And there you got it. Now I'm going to repeat that process for the next two or three then I'll come back to you and we'll take a look at it all right I have my first five slats on here I'm gonna bring you down to the side and show you what I'm talking about with that uh, keeping the uh, slats close together to make that transition around the nose if I was using wide ones this would be very edgy very edgy and you'd feel that in the back of your leg when you sat on it. But by doing this, that makes a nice, a nice pleasing curve. Now what I do is I keep that quarter inch spacer for the first five. I even put it in between the one inch and the inch and a half. Now when I step back to the next one, I will go to my five eighths, my five eighths inch spacer. And I will use this the rest of the way. And uh, what that does, you know, you could put them all a quarter inch apart, but that makes it difficult to get in between them when you're trying to put the finish on. Or if you had to do any extra sanding, I recommend that you sand all these parts prior to putting them together. That's what I did. I went over, I didn't show you that. Who wants to watch a bunch of sanding? I went over them crudely with the uh, sander. Obviously, you don't have to focus too much on the underneath because nobody's going to be touching that part. But you do want your main focus to be on your show pieces. And your show cards is what I show, what I call these parts out here that people's rear ends are going to be sliding across and touching the armrest. You know, you want to focus, put more detail on those pieces because people are going to... So bringing you up front, you see how we're looking there. Those gold colored screws really go well with about anything. See, I got a little sanding to do there. I missed a spot. But once I get it together, I'll do a once over. I'll go back over it and sand everything. And in between the finishes also, I will uh, use finer grits as I get to my final coat. It'll be almost like glass when I get done. But anyway, I will set you up and uh, I will finish out the seat. And I hope y'all don't mind that I'm not showing everything in real time. I mean, it would be boring as crap. And this video would be three hours long if I showed you every single thing that I do. But uh, I don't think so far I've left you without enough information that you can't get to where I'm at right now. I mean, it's pretty simple.
that it's time to start going up the back. Got the seat done. Turn you guys up. Use this uh, 5 8 spacer. I'll throw it in this hole right here in the back. Just like that. And I'll let my first slat rest right on top of it. And two, I'm going to bring you here and explain something to you right quick about how these uh, members lap together. Because of the lap joint, you're losing an inch and a half right here and on the other side. That means these back slats are three inches shorter than the seat, which is 48 inches wide. The reason they're shorter is because of this lap. You're dropping in to here. So when you cut your back slats, they need to be three inches shorter if you're building yours the same way I'm building mine. Just wanted to explain that. You'll use this same 5 8 spacer all the way up until we get to the curve. Then you guessed it, we're going to go back to the quarter just to make that, make that curve. You just lay this thing flat just like that. Touch back with you when we get to the top. All right, we've made it to the top. Now what I'm having to do is uh, take some shorties, some narrow ones, and make this turn. Then I'll use a probably an inch and a half one back here. This into an inch and a half, down to an inch. As I'm making that curve, I'll go one. All right, there we go. We made our transition nice and smooth. All right, I stood my upright up here. Well, if you're wondering about the measurement, now, <clears throat> like I told you, if you're not doing cup holders, you would just put a regular 2x4 up through here, 11 inches high. That's how high I set this, 11 inches. Um, measuring back with what this two, this right here is made from a 2x6. That's how wide this up here has to be. To accommodate room to make a three inch wide cradle and still have enough wood material left this is how this all came about how did i come up with a y-shaped upright well i wanted to make it my own i told you earlier and that before i started out with a two by six and it looked kind of bulky to me it was wide so i started out with an hourglass shape i didn't like that too good then i just thought about making a y-shape to trim some of the meat off of it what i've got here foolish allergies is kicking my tail this pollen if you're doing the y shaped i set it over about three and a half to three and three quarters i got it figured out because the way i space my slats all the time i just even it up with that first inch and a half slat right even with it and it's the same every time but if you're measuring it's about three and three quarters of an inch from the front to the edge there now that i got my first one in and that's nice and flat. I'm going to drill this one through. Right. I'll put my bolt in. Just doing the same thing I've done with the frame. Put a washer on each of them, a lock washer, and then I will put a nut on there. That's a big nut. Don't know how that got in there. Think I could buy a little bit longer bolts there, do you? Just a little bit. Using them for other purposes, I would get some more appropriate to size. But this is okay. Tighten this up like you did the back. You don't want 
god awful tight, just snug it. You don't want to split the wood. Watch the carriage bolt sink up into the wood and get flat. Okay. This ain't precisely where it needs to be, but it'll be good enough to show you. You see, we drop in an inch and a half here. So that's why my armrest curves in. This is pretty much a straight shot from here to here. You can see that. You don't have to have this curve in there. You could take a two by six if you wanted to and just make it straight right here and come on the outside and make you a nice subtle, subtle arch in there. You don't have to have this. And that just kind of gives people like me with a little bit of belly on them some more extra room right in here. But really it just makes a nice little curve. It doesn't have to have this right here. This could all be straight. It really wouldn't matter. But you see the way that works out, it centers the board the way that drop-in does and everything. That brings us in. Whoop, I turned you sideways. I'm sorry. I want to leave you out on this. I've got my quarter-inch bit back in the drill. I'm going to put a quarter-inch lag through here into the swing back there. So... I normally come about, I normally come in about an inch, maybe somewhere around in there in center. If you don't have a steady hand, it's probably best that you do this on a drill press or something. I got that pretty even there in the okay you see what i did there i cut me a cheater block to put right here to hold that back up because i don't have two people here working by myself remember this is 11 inches so there's three and a half and seven and a half is 11 to the underside now that that's got that held in place i'll come over here and just eyeballing it, that's about where I want it. It's just when I do the other side, I'll take my ruler and put it right here. And I'll do that, make sure that measurements are the same over there so they're symmetrical. So now that I got that up here, I'll take my quarter inch drill and pop a hole through the frame here. That's about where I want it. Let me double check. come out just a little yeah right there is where I want it this is pre-drilled remember I'm just gonna follow it through Five inch carriage bolt, put it in there. I'll set this in its where it goes. And now I'll take my pencil and mark out the location for the cup hole to be drilled. Now that I've got that right where I want it, I'll come in here and mark. Mark right where that is perfect. See that right there? There's my two marks. Now I'll go over here and take my three inch hole saw bit and I'll cut that out. they say I'll go over here to the router and give that a nice round over I'm sorry the shaper I'll be right back oh these allergies are killing me man oh
just like that and went to the router, rounded that jewel over, the shaper, it's basically a router on steroids. take you off of here and show it to you I like doing it that way because it all lines up perfect you can't get it off uh, see there there's how my cup holders work this upright down here makes that cradle for your beverage to sit in my own design I kind of like it <clears throat> that's how that works now I'll put I'll put a screw, I'll pre-drill and put a screw down on each side and I'll tighten this bolt up here and that's all that needs. But that is, that's how I do my cup holders. It's not that bad looking. Nice curved arm. And see that four and a quarter wide gives you enough meat here that it's not too frail. And you got a three inch hole here. And uh, now that you've seen me do that, I'll finish this up and meet you back for the other one. Well, talking about it, I'd rather show you this part. It's kind of like I'm custom fitting all this together. And I always do, even though I make them the same all the time. That's hitting right in the center, so I'll come in here with my pencil and I'll... Lightly mark where all that is. So what I do is I tighten that back leg carriage bolt just tight enough that I can flip this up and it don't fall down. You see I marked that while I had it down there so that I could get these holes perfect. So now I'll switch out my bits. I'll drill about center or where that is right there. And that gave me a hole so when I drill down through here it'll be perfectly in the center of these two posts here. Oh, let me get you back right here. And put me right in the center, perfect. And I'll pre drill them down into there. I don't want this to split, being it's only an inch and a half. Don't want that to split. So now, when I drive my two screws, it's all pre drilled, it's perfectly in line. Boom. You can see here my pre-drilled holes. These three and a half right here. They're three and a half. That's what they are. <clears throat> I'm sorry, three and a quarter. I'll get it right here in a minute. Get them both started. and snug I'm a terrible cameraman Lord of mercy people people want to get sick they watch me move around with the camera I just think that's a nice neat take on doing cup holders I mean it's just the way I do them it doesn't mean it's the thing to do or it's the best thing in the world. It's just one man's take to make it his own. My own individual way of doing something. So I'll drop it down about level with it so you can see it again. But that is the Y-shaped upright to make a cup holder.
And you could do it the other way. You could use my whole idea, and then when you get here, you could just do a two before upright with a ledge hanging off of it to be under here. Or you can put a two before upright kind of over here, have your hole over here missing that two before, and put you a stainless steel insert in there like some people do. You could do this ever how you want to. This is just the way I do it. Now, the only thing left to do here before I go to the other side, number one is go ahead and tighten that uh, carriage bolt up there. <clears throat> and I'm going to get my eye, eye bolts, eye hooks, whatever you call it. I'll have one here and one right up here. And that's where the chains are going to hook to the swing at. So let me go find those and I will be right back. All right, I got my little... Uh, Eye bolts here. I guess that's what you call it. Yeah, eye bolt. This is a 3 8 eye bolt. Uh, it's rated at 160 pounds per bolt, but I believe that's hanging in the hanging position with something on it like that. I normally put them in in a sideways position, turned up like that. And I'm going to be honest with you. I built a guy a swing a few years back, a six footer, and he's probably two, he's over 200 pounds. He said him and three other friends sat in that swing. That was at least 800 to 1,000 pounds. And he said it did not bow, buckle, or even give the slightest hint that it was about to break. So if it's a lie, he told it. But uh, these have never failed. So, so inch and three quarters, two inches, drill your hole straight through. Same thing for up here. reason I have those bigger washers in my little kit over here is because these things never come with washers. So that's what I use these for. I normally put about, I don't know why, I normally put me about two or three here just to kind of boost it out a little bit. Make sure I clear that chain comes up and clears this a little bit. Now I'll go on the inside and put a washer and put this and tighten that down pretty snug. When the chain goes on, it's going to hook here and kind of go at an angle and meet this one. So let me go ahead and get that tightened up and I'll get the other one tightened up. I don't think you need to see that. That's pretty explanatory. I meant to tell you one last detail regarding this top hole up here where the eye bolt is going to hook into. I'll come back here on the back side of it. Just because this is only an inch and a half and I'll cut me a little block and screw in here just to give it some more meat to hold on to. Cause you know, there's a lot of weight hangs here. I want this to be strong. So I cut this about four inches long and I put it just where you can't see the edge of it sticking up over the slat here or hanging down here. Yeah, you'll be able to see it through here, but it won't be a little edgy looking thing hanging up between the slats. So I just put that in there. Once I got it screwed in, I took my drill, using my other hole as a pilot, and popped a hole on through it too. And that just gives my eye bolt a little extra meat. I'll stick it through here. See there? That's nice. That gives it a little extra meat. So that bottom, it's got... The upright and the frame, it's got the same thickness down there that it's actually going through. So this kind of mimics it up here, and I think that makes it a little stronger. Coming back to the front, 
see all you can see is that you don't see it sticking up here or down there straight on so it's really not that bad now that you've seen me do this whole side I'm going to mimic everything we did on this side on the other side and I won't have to show you that twice so you've seen this now I'm going to get that done and I'll get right back to you not sure if I showed y'all this part and I apologize if I didn't putting the other upright on I start out by coming down here and drilling me two quarter inch holes and I'll just kind of hang out toward the bottom here somewhere I'll come up about a half inch and a half inch and I'll pop one about right here and then I'll repeat the same over here It's kind of hard to remember what you did and didn't do. And there we go, friends. We have the assembly complete. But the video's not over yet, friends. We got some sanding to do. And we're going to put some clear coat on this thing. I'm going to see you. We're going to see it all the way through together. You just really can't appreciate anything made out of cedar until it gets the finish put on it. I mean, that finish, the oil-based uh, spar urethane will really bring out the deep reds and purples of this cedar. The whites, it'll really just make it all come alive. So just take it all in how it looks now. All pink and whatever, but when that finish goes on, it will turn a dark red and purple, and it'll really, really bring the life out of it. As my friend would say, it is hot enough to cook pigs in here. I got that heater rolling. That's one good thing about having a wood heater. You can take all your scraps you've got and burn them. You know, this um, heater is mobile home rated. Y'all are probably wondering why the cabinets are so close and I got something sitting there. Slabs right there, a fan behind it. This thing is rated to be in a mobile home. And it's rated to be about 16 to 18 inches off the wall in a mobile home which is what it is over there the wall don't even get hot i can put my hand on everything around that heater and it's just warm so that's one good thing about that heater and it really heats this shop it's 24 by 24 it's not insulated at all so uh yeah man that heater right there will about run you out of this building and I got a chimney. I built a real chimney on the building. So uh, that works out great. I'm getting ready to start sanding. I'm not going to film any of that. Nobody wants to see a bunch of sanding. Got the first coat of finish on last night. I have yet to sand. I'm going to put another coat on tonight. But you can see comparably from the last picture you saw the swing. It was really pink. This is just the first coat. It pretty much draws in. I mean, it's not really shiny yet. Well, like I was telling you here, look, there's a 12 ounce drink can that fits easy in there. Uh, I'm not sure what ounce this cup is, but it fits right in there. Over there, we have a solo cup in that one. Fits perfect like a glove. I'll come over here where you can see it. So a three inch cup hole is pretty good size. It also fit a 20 ounce drink bottle. So that's pretty versatile size without having to go super big armrest to make a bigger hole. But, uh, show you again how that looks in there. It won't fall out. I mean, it's right in the middle. It can't go nowhere. That's about three inches deep right there. It's not going anywhere. I said I was going to use 220, but I found some 320, so I'm going to go with that. Got some 320 Pro sand here. I've already done sanding, but. When 
went over and dusted everything. Got this hooked to the dust collector. If I didn't mention it previously, I put a two and a half inch hose to my dust collection system. So with this wide open, I had to open one of the other blast gates about halfway, and that way I don't starve the blower for air. And this thing has pretty good suction. Put another coat of, I believe I showed you what I use. Another coat of Helmsman Spar Urethane Clear Gloss. I'm gonna put four coats of this on. We got one so far. I forgot to mention as well, I buy all my paint brushes at the Dollar Tree. Not a sponsor. But uh, I think this is Tool Bench as a name brand. Some of these little tools they got in the Dollar Tree ain't bad. I mean, they're not professional, but they'll get you by on a small job. These are good. These are good brushes. It's real wood handle. I mean, the bristles. The bristles are real good. I mean, it's really for a dollar or whatever. You can't beat this. I mean, if I'm only paying a dollar for this, I'm not going to waste my time washing it out. I'm going to use it and toss it. But, uh, yeah, ever since I found their brushes, I haven't been using anything else. So this is what I use. Mostly the two inch paint brush from the actual Dollar Tree. That is the second coat right there. I just got done putting it on. See how that shines and really brings out that red. It really looks good in the sunlight. I mean, this don't do it justice. There's something about that pure sunlight that really makes the color come out. Now the back here I haven't done yet. What I like to do, if I was to take and start clear coating this, you know, the excess would kind of rake into that hole and you'd get a run. You'd have to keep dabbing at it. I like to do the seat because the screw holes are pointing up. They kind of get full and soak in with poly. When all that dries tomorrow, I'll flip this thing up and then I'll do this. And let it stay that way till it dries. And then while I got it flipped up, I'll do the underside of the seat. The way I got it sitting now, I've done the top of the seat and the very back. I touched it up because there's no screw holes to make runs. Let's see, I got the back touched up. So tomorrow when I come in from work, I'll flip it over and do the other side. Now I'll do this for about the next couple of days. This is Monday. I'm going to say about Wednesday, I'll put the final coat on it. All right, we have three coats on here. Let you see how, how that's looking. Let me see my reflection. Yep, can you see my hand reflection? Almost like a mirror. You can see my hand in the reflection. <coughs> really don't even need another but I'm going I'm going to do what I said it's going to be four coats so one more it's looking real nice I love the way cedar looks the dark red here's another look at the swing it is done out here in the sunlight to show its true colors. It's really beautiful wood. But I'll edit into this 
portion of the video. It really came out nice. Got a real glossy finish there. Let's see if we can see our reflection. The sun's kind of out there. So you can see the reflection of my finger. That turned out real nice. All right, take a good look at this swing because I'm getting ready to show you about five pictures of a swing I built last summer. The same size, only difference is it doesn't have cup holders. It has the regular uprights and armrests. And instead of being a roll top, it has a headboard design up top. And I think the one in particular has scroll work in the headboard. But what you see next is showing you the difference between what I consider a roll top and a headboard. All right, back inside to wrap things up. Um, if you stuck around this long, I appreciate you. I don't know if I could have put up with listening to me this long. But uh, anyway, uh, I wanted to give you a materials list breakdown of what you would need to build your own four-foot swing. I may have gave you bits and pieces throughout the video, but I'm going to go back and edit most of that. Most of your information on materials is going to be right here. Um, what we need for this swing, I'll just go through the materials list real quick and then we'll do like a little breakdown. Uh, three 2x4x8s, by by one 2x6x8, by by five decking boards. Now what I'm doing is talking to you as if you were going to the box store to buy lumber because not everybody has access to cedar lumber. And even if you do, this is kind of giving you an idea it normally when I have to buy my lumber from Lowe's and I'm when I'm using treated lumber if that's what the customer wants I will use decking boards for the slats so they're like five and a half inches wide and an inch thick so if you were going by those terms you would need five eight foot decking boards to build this swing 14 quarter inch by four inch carriage bolts with nuts washers and lock washers I used 108 two and a half inch saber drive all weather screws. I used four three and a quarter of the saber drive screws down into the armrest because this is an inch and a half thick. You want to be able to reach down into here good, whether you're doing the cup holder or doing a regular upright. I used four three eighths by five inch eye bolts. There's one located here and here. Uh, let's see, do, 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 do. I think I wound up using about a quart of the Helmsman Spar urethane. I used a gloss. Uh, if you buy it by the quart, it's about $20. If you buy it by the gallon like I did, it's probably $50. Save a little money that way. Um, breaking this thing down into the slats the way I did them. Now I'm going to make this suggestion that you do it this way for the seat because of the curvature. Cutting them the widths that they are here work out the best for the curvature. Uh, the first four are inch wide. All of this is an inch thick, all your slat material. These are inch wide and they're four foot long. You've got four of them, one, two, three, four. Then you will resort to eight of the inch and a half wide by four foot. When we get to the back, uh, this is optional. You don't have to do this the way I did because it's a straight back. There's no curve to it. You could use a wider board as you want to back here. You don't have to follow the way I did it. Uh, you could use four, five, six, ten inch, whatever you want to do. It is totally up to you on that. But 
If you're following along with my plan, you will need one, two, three, four, five, six of the two inch wide by 45 inches long slats. Then it transitions to an inch and a half by 45 long, two inch wide by 45 long, and then we transition back to an inch and a half by 45 long. Now, why are the back slats 45 inches and the seat slats 48? Well, that's because right here, because of this lap joint, you're dropping in an inch and a half, and you're doing that on both sides, so that is three inches. So 48 minus three, it gives you your 45 of the back. And my, you see how my armrests work out with that drop in. You've got a straight shot, and that puts your upright right in the center of your armrest, which is what you want. That's perfect. That's where you want it. So it works out great that way. So uh, let's see. I don't want to miss anything. I think I told you the armrests themselves, the length on those are 25 inches. And they're four and a quarter wide. You see that. That cup holder is three inches. The upright is 11 inches tall. I used a two by six. You can actually see I actually ripped that down to five and a half because that's my template. So you see you got your three inch hole and then you got a little bit of meat on the outside. Got about an inch and a quarter of meat on each side. So that works out. The uh, seat and back frame members are 24 inches. Remember, we are on a 15 degree angle. Measuring from the very long tip of that 15 degree angle, this will be 24 inches long. Minus your uh, flat thickness. This is just the frame I'm talking about. 24 inches long. Same with the back frame member. From the long tip of the 15 degree angle up to the top is 24 inches long. You have a back strap right here. Remember we talked about that? That is three and a quarter wide and that that allows you to, it not only does it tie the frame members together and help spread the weight load out, it also gives you a way to square this all up and ensure your 16 inch spacing. So it, it helps to unite everything, square everything, it boxes it in, it adds rigidity. Uh, I don't want to miss anything here, sorry for the rambling. We've got these blocks that we added right here. So the eye bolt would have it three inches to go through as opposed to inch and a half. I just think that makes it stronger. Got four screws holding that block in there. Repeated the actions on both sides. And uh, let's see, I don't want to leave anything out. Oh yeah, the spacing on the eye bolts. It really, it really doesn't matter exactly where you put these as long as you mimic it on the other side if you put this one uh what what i did is you know half of three and a half here is an inch and three quarters so i made my mark there i came up two inches and that's where i drove my hole two inches by inch and three quarters and i did the same on the other side up here i repeated the same process i come in uh inch and three quarters and i came two inches up off the armrest high popped a hole there Make sure all those are drilled the exact same. If you do not, your swing may hang at a slight angle. It may swing. It won't swing right if you get uh, one end higher or lower. It will have. It will be out of uh, out of balance, really. But as uh, uh, far as the chain, I always try to use a good chain. I think I showed y'all that. Um, just in case I didn't, here's a piece. I'm not even sure the size, but. Uh, I think this length of chain I get is rated for about 800 to 1,000 pounds, and you've got two of them, one on each side, so that doubles that weight capacity. I use the quick links to connect the chain to these eye bolts. You know, it's got the little screw part. That it's, like, it's like a link of chain with a, a screw part you can open up the hook on. Most of those are rated at six to 900 pounds a piece. I mean, they're really strong, and they make a good junction point. Um, I will show you more of that when I do the uh, weight limit test on my swing. It'll be in a, probably the, uh, a couple videos from this one. I'll do a 
I'm going to build three swings and do like a weight limit test to see exactly how much weight they can take before they break. I mean, you look at these swings online and there's always a, a suggested weight limit. And I had a friend tell me one time he had a six foot swing that I built that held a thousand pounds. Now he claimed that him and three buddies were in there and they're all over. They're at least 220, 250 a piece. It was around 800 to a thousand pounds. If it's a lie, he told it. So we're going to try to find out if that's true or not. And you're all going to get to see that. But, uh, uh, that is a rundown of the parts list. Uh, if it's like, I, I may have said it before in this video, if I haven't, if enough people really get interested in this build, and really the only hard part about this is figuring out the curvature of the frame right here, the frame member. Remember I showed y'all this earlier? You know, that's what you're looking at right there. That's your 24 inches, your 15 degree angle. If I get enough people interested, I may uh, make it where you can download templates or find them. I'll try to figure out how to do it to make it available to you online where you can uh, have the armrest and seat. The rest of it is, is pretty easy to figure out. It's all straight stuff. There's no angles to it. Uh, the vid everything I've given you in the video should be more than enough information to help you. But um, I also mentioned if um, I, I may, I may do a Facebook uh do a Facebook just for this channel, the Sheffield Woodworks. I used to have a Sheffield Woodworks Facebook, uh, and I just, uh, you know, I, like I said, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, I got kind of burned out there at one time and got so much work, and it was about light work instead of a hobby. I would come home every day from work and come straight out here and go to work, and it was taken away from my family time, and uh, I just kind of shut it down, but... I may start that back up so you all will have a way to communicate with me via, via messenger. Uh, it, that would be very handy on things like this swing here. People could talk to me, you know, that way uh, on personal questions that they may have. So look for that here soon. When I get it back up and running, I'll mention it on my channel so you can all go and uh, follow it. But if anybody has any trouble building this, just uh, hit me up in the comments for now and when I get that page up and running, I will uh, probably uh, pin the comment on this video so you'll all know you can go to Facebook and find me. But as far as my regular Facebook channel, I haven't really given out my full name, but if you're savvy enough and follow along, <laughs> I've already had friends call me by my first name in the comments. You know, I guess I didn't say anything about it, so I try to keep some of my stuff private, but that's okay. Uh, don't send me a uh, friend request on my regular page if you do figure out who I am because I will not accept it. Uh, if I don't know who you are, uh, you know, you shouldn't either. Don't accept. I mean, there's so many copycat accounts out there. You don't know who you're talking to. I don't want all the headache. I don't want the headache. So uh, if I don't know you and you're sending me a request on my regular Facebook page, I probably will not accept Uh but anyway, I really appreciate y'all watching this long. Um, before I go, you don't have to use cedar. You don't necessarily have to use treated lumber. You could use yellow pine to do one of these builds and stain it and clear coat it. If it's going under a covered porch or under roof out of the rain, it doesn't matter what wood you use, really. But uh, out in the weather and the elements, your two best bets are cedar and uh, treated I've heard someone say white oak is good. I may try to build one out of white oak soon. But uh, I know when I do the uh, weight limit test, I'm going to build three swings to be fair. I'm going to do one with yellow pine, probably one out of poplar because it is kind of a hard softwood, and I'm going to do one out of probably white oak. And I, in my mind, I see the white oak, you know, holding more weight. But we're going to see. It's just kind of an overall test. In my, in my way of thinking, you can't just build one swing and consider that a basis for all woods. You just, you got to kind of got to hit on both ends and in the middle and hope that it's close enough. But I've never had any problems or anybody tell me that my swings broke. I just want to know what the limit is when they do break. And we're all going to find that out, you know, uh, probably a month or so from now I'm going to build three swings and we're going to test them until they break but anyway um, 
Really appreciate y'all coming along for this video, taking the time to watch it, like, and subscribing. Um, I apologize for any, uh, <clears throat> any what you might call bad content. I mean, I'm, I've never, I haven't had anybody really complain, but I'm not really a teacher. I'm trying my best here to relay what I like to do to you, and I apologize if it's boring or I'm too long-winded on some things. It's This is one of those things in my mind that's kind of hard to just skirt over, especially the smaller details. I want a person that when they watch this, they are able to fully build it without any more questions, and I hope I've done that. But like I said, you can find me on Facebook. Here soon I will reinstate the Sheffield Woodworks Facebook page, and um, I'll let you all know. But anyway, um, I appreciate you. And I will see you on the next one. If you in this channel, hit the like button and subscribe. Thumbs up. Thumbs up.